All right, so this is video two. Um, what we learned in the first video is how to find the arc length in uh, three-dimensional, with a three-dimensional space curve of some kind. So now what we're going to talk about is this idea of re-parameterization. So we know what it is to parameterize something, to give it um, a variable which relates to all of the other variables. Um, basically, it gives it sort of a um, an independent variable to go along with your dependent variables. Um, in this case, what we're going to try and do is we're going to try to re-parameterize something in terms of something else. Doesn't really make a lot of sense yet. Hopefully it will. Okay, so what we see is on the left-hand side here, I have a space curve defined as R of T equals um, T, T squared, T cubed, and we're going to say that that goes from 1 to 2. The question is, on the right-hand side, I have this space curve, which is defined as a function of U, S of U, which is e to the u, e to the 2u, and e to the 3u, from 0 to the natural log of 2. Question is, are they the same? Are these two space curves actually the same curve? Well, we can kind of, kind of try and figure this out. So if we let, in our first one, <clears throat> we know that the x value is t. Okay, that's, where, that's what's in the x component. x is t. Well, how would I define y then? Well, if y is t squared, but x is t, then we can define y as x squared. Likewise, for z, if z is t cubed, but again, x is t, then that becomes x cubed. So, we can figure out kind of at least in general, where are we going to start? <clears throat> so the starting position at t equals 1 would simply be the point 1, 1, 1. Okay, that's just plugging 1 in for all the t's. There's no big, no big um, mystery there. And the ending point, so if we plug 2 in, you're going to get... 2, 4, 8. So, again, we can just kind of see, and this is not like an actual proof proof, but we can kind of see where that one is, where it starts, where it finishes, and we parameterized x, y, and z in terms of x in this case. So, let's go to the other side. Now we've got this function of u. Okay, so once again, we can use the same general idea and say, okay, over here, x is our first component, which is e to the u, y then is going to be e to the 2u, but again, remember that e to the u itself is x, and don't forget that e to the 2u is the same thing as e to the u squared. They mean the same thing. So really, uh, that would give me y is going to be x squared. And then z, likewise, is e to the 3u, which is the same as e to the u cubed. So that means that z is going to be x cubed. So far, it certainly does look like these things are the same. So if we're going to take and we're going to plug in our starting point. So we'll plug 0 in to all of these and see what we get. Well, it's not going to be... Um, Not going to be too difficult to see there. And I apologize, we're not plugging 0 in there because 0 itself is in terms of, of u. So we have to plug those into here. So if we plug in 0 for all the u's, e to the 0, e to the 0, e to the 0, it's all 1. So 1, 1, 1. Where does it end? It never ends. No. Um, so we're going to plug in the natural log of 2 e to the natural log of 2, e to the natural log of 2. Remember that e and natural log are inverse operations, so that's just going to give you 2. e to the 2 natural log of 2. Well, now, remember you what you can do is you can bring that 2 out here and make it the exponent. So really, that's e to the natural log of 4, which is 4. Same idea. 
you can do e to the 3 natural log of 2, bring the 3 up here, so 2 to the 3rd power is 8, so you get 8. So they both start and end in exactly the same place. They can be parameterized basically the exact same way. Are they the same? Certainly appears that way. Now, why are we doing this? Well, what that's saying is there is a way to take something that was in terms of t and re-parameterize it in terms of another variable. And in this case, we actually took it and, um, and did something in terms of another variable, u, on the right-hand side. Now, how you get from one to the other is a little bit different, and that's what we'll talk about in the next section. All right, so here's our goal. The goal is going to be to reparameterize something in according to arc length. So let's first of all, we're going to define some kind of a space curve, and then we'll talk about what that actually means. So we'll say that R of T is going to be our helix that we've dealt with before. So we'll do cosine T, sine T, T. So right now, the arc length is going to end up being a function of time. So if we were to look at our space curve right now, if I were to give you a t value, you could figure out where on the space curve we were. You could create a vector which points to that specific place on the space curve. What we're going to try to do is we're going to try and reparameterize this so that we're going to be able to figure out based on the position of um, the function where um, what time did that occur. So we're going to reparameterize this thing in terms of arc length. So again, right now, arc length, arc length is a function of t. Okay, we're going to try to reparameterize that. So let's see how we would do that. So first of all, we know the arc length formula. Arc length formula, also known as S of t. We're going to say that this thing starts at zero in this case. So it's going to go from zero to some time t. We know that the arc length is going to be each one of the derivatives squared. All added up and under the square root. with respect to t. So again, what this says is as s, which is your arc length, increases, s of t, which is a function of t, measures the length of the arc from t equals 0 to t equals t. So basically from any time 0 to any other time after that that we wanted to call it. So as the s as, as s increases, the s of t is going to measure the length of the arc from time 0 to whatever time we pick. For example, if I were to pick s of 0, well, then that would just be an integral from 0 to 0. There's not really anything to do there. That would simply be 0. There would be no arc length. That would make sense. If I was to do s of 2 pi, well, we have to do a little bit of work to figure that one out. So we can do our integral in general. We're going to go ahead and, in general, we're going to integrate our um, space curve here. So we're going to have that s of t is the integral from 0 to t 
and I didn't plug in the um, 2 pi here because I want to do this in general so I could figure it out for any time. So we're going to do the an, uh, antiderivative or integral of. Derivative of cosine is negative sine, so negative sine t squared. Derivative of sine is cosine, so cosine of t squared. Derivative of t is 1, so 1 squared with respect to t. So s of t is going to be, well, if you take sine and square it, take cosine and square it, you're going to get sine squared plus cosine squared, which is 1, plus another 1 is going to give you the square root of 2. So you're going to have the integral from 0 to t of the square root of 2 dt. Antiderivative, square root of 2 times t from 0 to t. This is still s of t. Plugging in t for t, it's just going to give you the square root of 2 times t. Plugging in 0 for t is going to give you 0. So ultimately what we get there is that s of t equals the square root of 2 times t. If I want to solve that for t, I can. I can divide both sides by the square root of 2. So we get that s of t divided by the square root of 2 is t. Okay, we're actually going to use that one in a second. But for now, we'll go back to if I wanted to find the s at 2 pi, I would literally just plug 2 pi in here for t, and we're going to get 2 pi times root 2. So what that tells me is the arc length from 0 to 2 pi is 2 pi root 2. But I can think of this in another way. Again, what I can do is I can solve this thing so that t is a function of the arc length. In other words, something being a function of something else, meaning t is now going to become the dependent variable and the arc length becomes the independent variable. That's the reparameterization. That's why I solved in that last step for t. Because now what I can do is I can write my r as a function of arc length, as a function of s. Well, if I do that, that's going to be going back up to the beginning here. It's cosine of t, but we reparameterize t as, I'm going to have to move this down a little bit, as um, s of t over root 2. So we're really going to get cosine of s of t over root 2, comma, sine of s of t over root 2, comma, s of t over root 2. So really, this is the same thing as the original r of t. The only difference is now I've let t become this s of t over 2. Or in other words, this thing right now is now dependent upon the arc length. So this is now dependent upon the arc length. And as a matter of fact, what it's going to give us is, based upon the arc length, it's actually going to give us the time that this occurs. So it's kind of flipped the um, independent and dependent variables here. In the original, the arc length or the position of the function was based upon the time. Now, based upon the position, I can tell you what the time was. That's kind of what we're doing here by reparameterizing. It's really the same function. It's just what's giving us what information is being given. So this is really the same as the original R of T. It's just going to be giving it to us in a different way. That's all. Okay, so let's go ahead and try an example. If r of t is 2t, 1 minus 3t, 5 plus 4t, and we want to reparameterize that with respect to arc length. So again, right now, using a value of t, it's going to tell me where on the space curve we are. We want to reparameterize this, so now that it, be, it becomes a, a matter of if I know um, what the arc length is, then I can actually find the position based upon arc length. So... 
let's go ahead and try and reparameterize this. So what we've got is we know that arc length is S of T. We're going to go from 0 to T. So we want to do this in general. We're going to take the derivative of each piece. So that's going to be 2 squared. Uh, looks like plus negative 3 squared plus 4 squared. It's always really nice when all you have are constants. DT. So then we're going to get, let's see, what's that going to be? The integral from 0 to t, 4 plus 9 is 13, plus 16 is 29. So we're going to get square root of 29 dt. Taking the antiderivative there, we're going to get the square root of 29 times t evaluated from 0 to t. That means that s of t is going to be the square root of 29 times t, because if you plug in the zero part, that goes away. So if I want to solve that for t, I'm going to get s of t over root 29. So my reparameterized function is going to be r of s of t equals. Now the original function was 2t, so it's going to be 2 times s of t over root 29 comma, 1 minus 3 times s of t over root 29, comma, 5 plus 4 times s of t over root 29. And that's now reparameterized. All right, we're going to go ahead and stop this one here, and we're going to come back and talk about our last piece of this particular 13.1 um, day one, which is going to be curvature.